Welcome to IPL 5 Daybreak. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Daybreak. This will no doubt be a fantastic matchup. It's already kicking off with Dong Rei Gu going for the infamous 10 pool opening. Oh yes, here we go. It's gonna be good. So let's introduce our players to the northeast position in the red trunks playing Zerg. His name is MVP Dong Rei Gu. The Horn of Gondor has been sounded. As to whether or not it will help his Terran opponent, that's a good question. To the southwest position in the blue trunks, playing Terran, he is... Startail Bomber. Thank you everybody for joining us here. This afternoon is, is just about this afternoon. Yep. But this build, we don't see it very often, especially against Terran here. But we'll see how this is going to work out. Of course, this build is usually put out there to punish very early command center first. Yeah. But we already have a Marine on the way. But there are six links. The SCV is about to discover What's this. going on? Oh, that's not an appropriate timing for links whatsoever. Oh, that's very, very rude. And what we're going to be seeing now is it seriously is Bomber actually going to expand while his links are coming in? No, no, he's not. He's going to back off here. That would have been gutsy to say the least from our star tail player. But yeah, you're right. It's designed to punish early command center. And Bomber is a very macro focused player. He plays in this matchup almost exclusively heavy macro barracks focused play. And at this point, what he's done is created this really neat little wall off there, which you can actually, it's a pseudo bunker. It's not a real one. It's like he made it out of cardboard and everything he could find around the place. He is doing his best to deflect these lings and make sure they don't get the surface area they need to do damage. And so far, he's doing it because when three Marines comes out, three Marines versus five lings, I would fancy the chances of Bomber and that's it. Yeah. The aggression has ended into the main. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too much of a big investment from Dong Regu. No, he's still no. at 15, 16 drones with four more on the way. With an early spawn and pull, he also gets uh, you know, the option to get that early queen too to get the lava injects a little bit faster. But it did force Bomber to keep the command center in the main base rather than yep. on the low ground. So because of this little delaying that we're seeing, easily he just throws down a third command center in retaliation, knowing that the follow-up aggression isn't really going to happen as it's usually only going to be drones. A little bit of follow-up aggression from the crowd there. It's okay, everything's fine. We'll just pedal a little bit faster. Second command center coming down. And yeah, this aggression is its not really gonna happen from Don Regu because as you said, this temple opening, mm. you got this late gas coming in at 32 supply and there's no speed. There's no sign of a roach warren, there's no sign of a bailing nest because he hasn't got any gas. Yeah, I, I mean, I really would be rare to see a Roach Warren come down Absolutely. Uh, to kind of punish or do anything here because the map's too big. Yeah. It'll take way it too, too long, long for the Roaches to get across there. So with that gas, we're, the two options are usually going to be here for speed straight away yep. or that he goes up to lay, depending on how he wants to play this out. But it's pretty much, it should be for speed. Yeah, you would certainly think so. It would be a little odd just to go straight to left from here. But then again, it is Dong Who knows? Gas has now been taken here for the Terran player as well, so add-ons are starting to be created, looking to try and expand here. The favorite bunker position of every Terran player on this map, by the looks of it, if you are playing ladder and you expand on this map, then yeah, just have a look at that. That's where you go, that's where you want to be. Simply because it's so hard for the Zerg to get a good surface area on that bunker, it means that your trade is eventually going to be much, much better, which is why all the pros are doing it. That's right, and it protects the mineral line and the ramp at the same time. Covers yep. both areas as these links do get pushed back rather easily. But we are going to see quite a aggressive bomber in the mid stages of this game, despite Certainly. the third command center down. He has opted to go straight for uh, three barracks here with steam early on. He's got a lot of Marines popping out per cycle here. But obviously with link speed on its own, it should be good enough to ward away the majority of the aggression. One thing that Dong Regu will have to focus on once he starts to scout out what is happening in this game is creep spread. Because creep spread, as mentioned earlier during the, this weekend, without Hellions and Banshees to deny it, 
then he can get the queens going out there and uh, immediately spots the barracks. And also, just to make sure he doesn't lose to any Stim Marine attacks, he gets the Bailey Nest as well, just to be safe. Certainly. He didn't see the add-on, so he can't be 100% sure that Stim is coming. But Bomber does like these fairly early game Marine Swell pushes without Medivacs mm. with Stim. And honestly, like from the games that I've seen from him, especially at Lone Star Clash 2, where we've got to see an awful lot of this, it has a kind of middling success rate. Sometimes it does a ton of damage, and sometimes it gets absolutely crushed. And it also means that the factory is later, the tech's later, the medivacs are later because he's invested so much in it. So we'll see if Dongregu can actually repel this without taking too much damage. Well, I'm pretty sure Dongregu is going to squat this very easily, as we're about to have the Marines make their way to the Zalnog Tower. There are a lot of links on the way. If Bomber escapes with these Marines, this is really good for him. If he doesn't, then naturally it's going to be very, very bad. But we'll see if these Marines get home, because that's a lot of links that were made if they don't kill anything here. Yeah, they're coming. Well, there's no combat shield either, and Stim would be risky, but that's a nice little lineup initially here for Bomber. He's able to get a good number of kills, but he has been surrounded at this point. Ling's not going to crush it, and they're able to do so. So that is that large pack of Marines done for, and a lot of resources lost there. And that's... Uh the Lings have uh, basically made their worth in this game now. Yeah. That's what they were there for. They've done their job, uh, and the game continues on, and Bomber loses a lot of those very early Marines. He's got really nothing left to defend, only a handful of units. He's lose the bunker. There's no question about that. Here comes the surround, and the safety bunker is great, but once again, Dongweku grabs the bunker, nails down a little bit of defense, killed a few Marines, and then dips out with these units, and he yeah. doesn't really care. It's just a bunch of Lings. He's okay with that. They don't even have upgrades yet. That uh, was a super good catch there by uh, Dong Regu. And because of that, the three bunkers had to come down. No Marines are left. He really doesn't have a follow up push with Stim now because of it. So Dong Regu is in a good position in this game. Interested to see if he's going to go for his traditional trademark Spire. Um, you know, he, he said in interviews before that he likes to focus on control. He likes to Here control not just his units, but the game as well. And there it is coming down. So he's going to be looking for a really good, aggressive mid-game finish it before he really needs to get up to the to the hive and so on. Yeah, th this is something we are seeing quite a bit more. It's odd that we hear a lot of Brutal Infester, Hive Tech, Brutal Infester all the time when it comes to this matchup. But actually in this tournament, we're seeing a lot more of this mid to early late game Lair aggression, whereby it's more the classic Muta Ling Bane Ling or Ling Investor and not actually going all the way up to Hive. When Hive does occur in this matchup, in this tournament, it is for the most part being for Ultralisks and not for Broodlords. That's right. And uh, right now, they both expanded to the middle, so we are actually going to see quite a, an intensive mid game here. What Don Regu probably want to do, realizing that his opponent is a little bit behind in terms of getting a lot of units out, is just get a lot of links, a lot of bailings, mutas to target down the tanks, and then just make a massive crush down assault into the middle just to wipe out the army and the expansion all at one time yeah. here. Mutilus count will begin quite shortly, and it's probably going to be about six by the looks of it. The gas count is not all that high. Bunker placed there just to delay the links from getting into it, so it did its job. It's not really too concerned about that. So, yep, it's going to be six Mutilus and the plus one flyer attack. And just looking through uh, Bomber's vision, he actually doesn't know about the spy. He doesn't know about the plus nope, one attack coming down. So he doesn't have any turrets back at home. So the way that I think Don Regu may approach this is just go send the Mutilus into the main base originally, just to start it off, kill a few SCVs, pull his opponents, Marines left and right, force a couple of stims, yep. and then start to build a big army, and then get everything together to crush through the middle. But if Bomber's going to walk across the map here with all these bane links, with speed, with the amount of links and Mutilus, I'm not too sure if this, this attack can uh, work that well. Well, Bomber. No, it doesn't seem so. Bomber would need a really good position here because what we've seen in this tournament is the idea that, oh, you've got siege tanks? Great. I'm just going to overwhelm you with a lot of units. And that's exactly what Dong Wei Gu is doing. And he's also adding mutilists into the mix, which in the hands of Dong Wei Gu could be dangerous, as can the ability to ravage that mineral line. That was, of course, not a plan to be fortress. And that means your mineral line is dead. Good game, good sir. But in the meantime, he's going to trade it for Dong Wei Gu's fourth base in the center. The question now is, do the armies meet and who is able to come out on top? The armies will definitely meet very shortly. It looks like the uh, uh, Terran army is pushing down to the third base. There's a lot of links, a lot of bailings coming down here. Tanks are seized. Don Ringu doesn't want to go yet. He wants to get all the links and mutas together and then crush with one big army. If he does it, he's probably going to be cruising Completely for the rest of the game. Shot down right there by Bomber. And this may be very badly timed. We're going to see links coming in for oh. Bailing hits are huge. They're massive. And down goes Bomber's army. Don Ringu crushes at the third base. And it was looking good for Bomber for a second, having targeted down those six speed bailings. But...
Then the sandwich came in from both sides. Bonwell was not prepared for that, and he was completely overrun. Yeah, and he hardly lost any. I mean, he did lose a couple of drones there, but he's already back to 80. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a third alive. He's got a fourth coming back down. And in the trade-off there, uh, the Mulas killed the, the third command center, so Bomber's back on two bases. So that was perfectly executed. And now, as mentioned, with the lack of turrets, here come the Mulas. Don Regu is absolutely commanding this game. Yeah, there's no real question about that. Mutalisks now running into a few Marines. Dongregu will easily get out of there without taking too much damage. As we know, the second follow-up push from Dongregu is very strong indeed. Oh, freebies, a donation be given. Oh, saved by Bomber, nicely done. And Dongregu's Mutalisk pushed away, one torn from the sky there. And what we have now is this fourth base going up once again. And what does Dongregu do from here? Does he sit back? No, he doesn't. He's Dongregu. He's going in. There's no siege going on right here. The Bailings are about to connect. The split is good from Bomber, but is it good enough? It's really good from Bomber here. Can he bring down all the Bailings? Unfortunately not. He didn't have quite enough after that first push. And while that was an excellent defense, Don Regu runs it over regardless. Yeah, Don Regu just with so many Link, Bailing, Muta available, great upgrades as well. And only on two bases, Bomber just can't build an army big enough. Oh, and here it goes again. And these links are going to overwhelm that last tank. A couple of Bailings coming in right now. The Marines must back off at this stage, or they will be taking out fresh reinforcements coming in right now. Muta versus upgraded Marines. There are too many Mutas and too many links on the ground. GG! Ladies and gentlemen, there you go, Dong Wei Gu taking that first game in commanding style. Yeah, super easy win there for Dong Wei Gu. Just calculated what he needed to do, saw the army move out, realized it wasn't that big of an army, destroyed the third, then came back. He actually uh, waypointed and had a lot of uh, links, a lot of bailings on his natural. Just bought his time until it was the right time to just destroy what Bomber had built up. It's just such a fun matchup when you see classic Terran versus classic Zerg. We're talking Ling Bing, Ling yeah. Bing, what? Ling Bling Mutalisk. We do not endorse Microsoft search engine here at IPL5, but we get this really awesome scenario where it's just constant aggression going back forth, back forth. It's not a very passive game at all. And as we saw there, that worked out really, really well for Dong Rei Gu, great control, excellent engagements, and Bomber wasn't able to handle it, which honestly is kind of unusual, because in my experience, Bomber plays the best when he's playing against the classic Zerg style. His positioning yeah. is always really good, he's usually all over the map, but I feel after that first push was crushed so convincingly, he didn't really have a follow-up to that, and Dong Regu was just allowed to hit 80 drones, get his fourth base, and do whatever he wanted. Yeah, I mean, it always stings as a Terran player when you lose your entire army, but then on top of that, you lose your third, it's, you can't recover what you've already lost. And Bomber, I think, needs to approach uh, playing against Don Regu a little bit different to what we saw in that previous game. Against Ling, Bailing, Muta, there are specific timings where the yep. gas count is really low for Zerg. So because they're spending on Bailings, Upgrade, and Mutalist, there is times when you can get in there before the Bailing count gets too high. That's why we saw a counterattack rather than a direct engagement originally from Don Regu. So Bomber has two ways to approach Don Regu. It's either he hits these crisp timings and doesn't you know, get hit by a counterattack, yep. or B, just plays super defensive. Because if you think about the amount of gas invested in this style, Infestors really come late into the game. So as long as he has the tanks, the marine upgrades, he will be able to continue through at a really good pace as long as he keeps up defense against the Mutalists as well. So those are the two styles that I think Bomber's really having to think about to uh, go into game number two. Certainly. And honestly, Bomber's really comfortable with that. He doesn't have a problem with it. He's played so many games. He's been around since essentially the start of mm -hmm. StarCraft 2. He's been a consistent TBZ competitor against this kind of style, and he's yeah. done it very, very well. But I feel that that initial attempt by him was ill-advised. It didn't really go very far. I've said before, I've seen it, and his success rate with it is maybe 50-50, if that. And after that game, I'd say it's lower. So we need to see a little bit of a different bomber, a more organized bomber, a more timed out bomber, going into this next game here against Dong Rei Gu. If it does not happen, then that'll be a 2-0 sweep, and one of the last standing Terrans will be out of this tournament. That's right, not too many uh, non zigs left in this tournament at the nope. moment, so of course, bomber fighting very hard to, to prevent that from happening. Uh, very interested to see what the next map is. I have a feeling it may be Ohana. Uh, of course, bomber gets the map choice here, and yeah, it is going to be Ohana, so yep. a smaller two